I'm going to tell you the story about the guy who didn't. Motivational speeches convey one mantra. Follow your dreams, pursue your passion. To thine own self be true, Polonius in Hamlet. We love deductive stories and mystery thrillers. Who done it? How? Why done it? Him is change. Here's the story of a guy who changed his mission drastically. How did it happen? For my Cambridge A levels, the only three subjects available in the art stream in the VI, Victoria Institution, were literature, history, and economics. In the University of Malaya, I pursued the same holy trinity. You could major only in one subject. I ranked my preferences, literature, history, politics, philosophy, law, and way beneath the carpet lay economics. Royal Professor of Economics, Unku Aziz, summoned me to his office as dean. Young man, he called me. Not shun, as was his usual custom. A heavy session was ahead for me. He said, we are a newly independent developing country. We need economists and engineers. Literature and history, you can read on your own, at your leisure. He pointed outside the window where these airy fairy subjects belonged. When I remained silent, he said, it's your duty to major in economics. Now, throughout my childhood, my father had always said, do your duty. So I said, yes, Major, uh, I mean, yes, Professor. Economics was medicine, bitter, but good for you and for your country. After my final Professor Aziz said, stay on as tutor. We both have beards. Beards of a feather stick together. I said that as a scholarship holder, I had to serve the government for five years. He called the Treasury's boss, Dato Malik Marikan, to recommend me. Later, I proposed to my minister Tun Tan Siu Sin, that our new Treasury economic report should have a chapter of social indicators on the quality of life in Malaysia. He asked me, what has all this got to do with the budget? I replied, everything, sir. He said, when questions are asked in parliament, you draft all the answers. I said, yes, minister. In Petronas, led by Dato Rastam Hadi, we went beyond economics to introduce the national oil depletion policy to ensure that the next generation of Malaysians still had the national asset available to them. I owe the best years of my working life to these fantastic four and more. A world-class scholar, Professor Wang Gangwu, was my lecturer in Chinese history at the University of Malaya. He enhanced greatly my love of history, second only to literature. He taught us about the repeat falls and falls before the rise of China. The three major eras in our modern history, British Malaya, the Japanese occupation, and the years after independence, 
were featured in marriage and mutton curry. I was asked over radio in Singapore about Robert Kwok's memoirs covering the very same three eras. I said that his was the mighty tiger tycoon's vision and mine the little mouse deer's view. His Royal Highness Sultan Nazrin Shah wrote the Royal Forward and launched my book in October 28. In October 2018, he said, I quote, while economic history gives us vital data, historical fiction such as marriage and mutton curry enables us to empathize directly with the people who shaped and were a part of our history. Historical fiction broadens this record to include the many non-winners who make up the vast majority of us." Unquote. Our Prime Minister, Tun Dr. Mahathir, said that when he read the story, Money Man, in Marriage and Mutton Curry, he smiled. Since he doesn't smile often, it was special. In Money Man, you will see our nation's five forefathers and key figures. Investment guru Jim Rogers advises that we should study philosophy to learn how to think. McKinsey says that 800 million jobs will be lost in the next 10 years to robots. One major group of people they cannot replace will be the ones who can create, empathize, understand emotions, and cooperate. A major form of creativity is writing fiction. As a child, when I read about daffodils and snow, I felt that we should read and write our own stories in tropical Malaysia. My bond with third world writers began with R.K. Narayan of India, V.S. Naipaul from Trinidad, and Chinua Achebe from Nigeria. Samad Syed, K.S. Maniam, Wong Puinam, Mohamed Haji Saleh, and Shirley Lim led the Malaysian charge. While Tesh Orr and Tan Tuaneng took it further. As a debater, I argued for viewpoints the opposite of mine. That was in the mind. Equally important is what's in our hearts. We have a unique word in Malay, kasian, which captures compassion, empathy, and putting yourself in the other person's shoes or feet as some were barefoot. When I saw ragging turning into bullying in university, uh, not in Nottingham, I felt kasian and pulled aside the most bullied to escape. Fiction helped give me empathy. At Butter Road Primary School, I didn't realize that most of the pupils were different from me until Parents' Day at year end. Almost all the mothers were dressed in chong sam, sam fu, skirt and blouse. My mother was the only one in a sari. My classmates asked, why your mother dressed so funny, ah? Huh? I wondered too. The civil service had staff in Sarong Kabaya, which air hostesses wear. I spent most of my life there. Now you know why. My fellow students in university and colleagues in the civil service were from all the races in Peninsular Malaysia. Sabah and Sarawak were represented in Petronas, completing my close understanding of all the races in Malaysia. Humor, kindness, and empathy I inherited from my mother, Anna Pakyam. People avoided her at funerals. One widow wailed, Are you my husband has built a big house for me 
and left me all alone in it. My mother said, our widow's bragging about her, about her house has made us genuinely weep about how small our houses are. Her companions laughed inappropriately. They say in Africa, when an elder dies, a whole library is burned down. Our tradition is oral. That's why the writing of our stories is so crucial. It is key to shaping the soul of our country from one generation to another. It's not all air-conditioned shopping malls and laptops. It's what our grandparents went through to build this country. Bertrand Russell wrote that there are two motives for reading a book. One, that you enjoy it. The other, that you can brag about it. Reading helps us adapt positively to change. I myself need advice. However, my tips for new writers are read often and widely. Invite critical feedback. Writing is rewriting. I'm just a rewriter. I use dialogue to make stories come alive in my dramatized performance readings. I change my specialization 180 degrees from one, from one extremity to the other. At first, I felt I was longer in economics than Nelson Mandela was in prison. However, later on, I realized that I'd put into practice the spirit of my many debates. I went beyond speaking to walking for decades in the shoes of people whose passion was different from mine. President Kennedy, in his 1961 inaugural address, said, Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Professor Unku Aziz predated him by asking me in 1960 to follow my country's passion, not mine. While I changed my mission fully, in other areas, I didn't. Someone recognized me 15 year, after 15 years had passed. I asked him how come. He said that it helped that I was wearing the same shirt. Ouch. We need to make big changes to be competitive in this changing world. Politics has separated by race and religion this most beautiful, compassionate, and hospitable nation. The colonial policy was divide et impera, divide and rule. Should we continue to be divided? We analyze our parliamentary constituencies purely by the percentage of Malays, Chinese, and Indians. We ignore vital differences of economic and social class and intra-ethnic pluralities. China, India, and Indonesia are much bigger than Malaysia. We can least afford to be divided. Should we be a multi-racist society or a multi-talented one blind to race? In official forms, to fill up race, my mother said, write human. In Malaysia, we have Malays, Chinese, Indians, Ibans, Kadazans, Dusun. We need more of us who are Malaysian first. We need affirmative action to help the poor and the weak instead of our own race and our own religion. Gandhi said, be the change that you want to see in the world. I became the change that my professor wished all of us to see in our country. I wish to appeal to all of you to see what you can do for our country to pursue 
a national or global goal rather than a mere private one. How can we change our country and our world for the better? That is the challenge for all of us. Thank you.